Hey, what's up YouTube? What's going on? With today's new video, what I wanted to talk about is two separate topics. But the first being, I actually put in a question for Dr. McGill, and I kind of mentioned this in my last video where I was invited into a webinar, and I was able to put a question in for him uh, due to me purchasing Gift of Injury during the pre-sale or kind of early bird special. So the question that I had asked for McGill was actually, what is his thoughts on my MRI with regards to it kind of showing the same structure during the initial MRI and the MRI follow up three and a half years later and his thoughts on why am I pain free? So he ended up actually answering the question and with regards to his response, for the most part it was more of a generic response and he couldn't really give specifics because he mentioned that he needed to do his own assessment, but he kind of gave some a little bit of insight and some thoughts as to possibly why I'm pain free. And a lot of it was kind of consistent and similar to what I mentioned in my video where I talked about my MRI follow-up and some of the reasonings and speculation as to why I'm pain free. And the majority of it has to do, in my opinion at least, with avoiding pain triggers, avoiding those positions that cause me pain initially, such as bending over and sitting, just avoiding those over a long period of time allowed for healing to occur, allowed for less inflammatory markers to possibly accumulate, all of those factors can be taken into consideration. Now with regards to McGill's response, there were a couple things that kind of stood out to me though that I didn't really even think about. And one of them was, is that the body can adapt and it could change the way things may be placed around the disc. So for example, certain nerves or the nerve itself that was being impinged from the disc could have adapted and could have changed its structure. And by changing its structure over the years, it essentially may have led to me being pain free and allowing me to go into those positions of flexion and sitting without having any pain. So the nerve itself could have adapted because it could have changed its positioning and it may have relieved or prevented any kind of pressure on that nerve root because of it being adapted to the way the disc protrusion has bulged out. But McGill also mentioned that the disc height and kind of the structure of the disc, if it's thinned out or whatnot, could also play a factor as well. Now, it's a little bit over my pay grade at the moment and it's still things I'm trying to learn myself as to when it comes to discs themselves and how and why one would be pain free and why one may not be pain-free if the disc is still the same. It's a very kind of complicated topic and there's a lot of kind of speculation and thoughts to it. But overall, it's kind of similar to what I mentioned. The big thing, what it comes down to is avoiding pain triggers. But if you guys would like to hear actually McGill's response, he actually did the webinar and it's now on YouTube. It's on Brian Carroll's channel and it's right towards the end of the video, around the 56 minute mark. You guys will actually hear Brian Carroll kind of uh, you'll actually hear Brian Carroll talk about my story as I kind of mentioned to it, him briefly and you guys may recognize it right away and then you'll hear my question then you'll hear McGill's response and also Brian also gives a response as well. It's about a two, three minute answer that they give. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description below to that video and I'll also put a link to that video as well on my website as well for you guys to check out. Now moving on to the second topic that I wanted to talk about is surgery. And I wanted to talk about the concept of virtual surgery that Dr. McGill refers to. So Dr. McGill refers to virtual surgery as a term used to describe someone that had just had an imaginary surgery done. If someone were to imagine they just had surgery, they're just starting their lower back rehab program and they just had surgery done and now they're engaging in that two, four, six, 12 month recovery program. So keep in mind, whenever you have surgery, whether that's maybe a spinal fusion, microdisectomy, these are invasive surgeries where surgeons are going in and they're cutting through tissues. And with regards to cutting through the tissues, this is going to cause damage. And it's and in order for that damage to go away, healing needs to occur. So there's going to be this phase of recovery. So whenever someone has surgery, they're not gonna be fixed right away. There's going to be that recovery program or recovery time afterwards, which is important to understand. And why this is important to understand, because if you were to take that same person and put them on a conservative plan, a good conservative plan, in some cases, and probably in most cases, you may be able to make a recovery following a good conservative plan in the same time that someone just underwent surgery, such as a microdisectomy or, or spinal fusion. 
which is important to understand. Because when you have a spinal fusion, you have these invasive types of surgeries, it's gonna cause damage, like I mentioned, and there's gonna be a time period for recovery. But same thing with conservative treatment. There, when you engage in conservative treatment, you're avoiding the invasive effects of those types of surgeries, but you can be making a recovery in maybe the same time if you follow a good recovery program. So that's what I wanted to kind of hit home and kind of mention here, is that one can make possibly the same recovery time if they were to undergo conservative treatment and avoid surgery. Now, that's undergoing a good conservative program, a good recovery program for themselves. Because when you're causing that invasive damage, sometimes it can possibly be permanent and really it's gonna come down to the skill of the surgeon themselves. And depending on what type of surgery it is, it's also gonna have an effect as well. Because if they butcher things, then you may be left with permanent damage, which is what a lot of people don't want, which is what a lot of people want to avoid. So I wanted to kind of just talk about that. But at the same time, when someone has surgery as well, that doesn't mean the kind of mechanism for the injury is kind of eliminated. Because why the injury occurred in the first place could be due to weak muscles, maybe there's imbalances that have occurred, and those need to be addressed, and those aren't going to be essentially addressed with surgery. Yes, they may be addressed after surgery with a conservative program afterwards, but with that conservative approach, you're going to get that as well, which is kind of one of maybe the flaws you can say with surgery and why a lot of people may want to kind of leave surgery as a last option and try to go for that conservative approach and develop the best recovery program as possible. Now keep in mind guys, I'm not a surgeon. I'm just someone who's went through the disc herniation themselves and I personally help people myself who are currently going through lower back troubles as well. And those are my, just my thoughts because at the end of the day I know no one wants to have surgery, specifically an invasive surgery on themselves and rather people would rather just want to make a recovery naturally as opposed to having the potential effects of having a surgeon go inside opening your back up and who knows what kind of damage could be caused or even if it actually is going to affect the problem or if there's long-term side effects of that surgery as well. So I just wanted to kind of talk about that because it's an interesting concept that McGill mentions and he specifically mentions it in the book Back Mechanic of the term virtual surgery where you're imagine where you have to imagine or just taking someone to imagine that they just have surgery and now they're starting their conservative treatment uh, with regards to a proper and good recovery program for themselves as opposed to just undergoing surgery. So what I mean when undergoing a good conservative program, identifying pain triggers, removing pain triggers, developing a good exercise program for themselves, developing a good nutrition program, taking into all consideration all the factors that may influence recovery. We can look at sleep and also kind of the mindset, the psychological aspects as well taking all those into consideration, developing the best program for yourself, which you may need to maybe work with a good clinician to get that structured, but back mechanic itself kind of gives you the direction of where you may need to go in terms of developing that own rehab program for yourself. So I just wanted to mention that as a concept and in this video, because a lot of people recently I've been asking me about surgery and my thoughts with regards to different surgeries. And while I'm not the surgeon, I just wanted to kind of talk about that with regards to the virtual surgery and the conservative approach when kind of comparing them. So that's just my thoughts, guys. And hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, anything, please leave a comment below. And I wish you guys all the best and a successful and productive day. Take care.